Hey, it's can up. one of you on your mic say this podcast is brought to you and powered by Sunday Cool? This podcast is brought to you by Sunday Cool, powered by yep. Sunday, cool. Sunday Cool. And then you say, watch this or listen. Watch this or listen. Ninjas or butterflies? Killed it. Killed it. That wasn't part butterflies of it. Butterflies are You guys power. are you're ruining it. Oh, we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Stop. We're really doing it, Harry. Stop, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> Hey, Josh. Yeah, Andy? My head's cold. <laughs> well, take this. What's this? It's our Black Sunday Cool Beanie. Wow, it's super soft. <laughs> I know, right? And what's this on the front? That's a customizable leatherette patch. Wait, are you telling me I can order these black beanies from Sunday Cool and put my own logo or design on this patch? You sure can. If you're a Ninjas or Butterflies listener, you can get them for only $9.99 each. Wow, <laughs> that sounds like a pretty good deal. You can say that again. So go to sundaycool.com forward slash promo and order your group's custom merch today. Um, hey Josh. Yeah, Andy? Thanks for being my friend. All right. <laughs> Let's get back to the show. Kenneth oh, Copeland. Oh, Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. Copeland. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see the thing where he talks about how why he needs two jets, not yeah. just one. He has two jets. Oh, yeah, because it, he doesn't want to fly in the tube full of demons, right? Dude, see, you need to do that. You need to meme, meme, video, meme, whatever that one is. That it, one is special. Because we only, like, we, we have his Bible. <laughs> So full of, when, it's full of demons. Someone sent us Kenneth Copeland's Bible, and it's all it's the Bible, but with like his notes in it. It's his highlighting. Period. Oh come on! No. But, like, but it's like simple things, like oh, he highlighted John three John three sixteen. It's like man, I just think this is a very important just, verse. It's like yeah, obviously, <laughs> dude. He wrote, he wrote Tim Tebow in the margins. Yeah, like what like, are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. It's like you citing Tim Tebow right yeah, now dude, for your source, like, dude, bro. I mean. Think about that for a love gift of uh, ninety nine ninety nine. You can have all, all my Bible notes. <laughs> That's, That's all like. you got to do, baby. <laughs> it's like, man, I'm that closer to heaven. Oh, dude, it's Perfect. So Just sow your seed right now. <laughs> How's everybody's ears? Anyone need anything? <laughs> I right. feel like I need to be a little bit louder. Right? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. A little bit louder now. A little bit louder now. <laughs> I love the I love the the size and the oh yeah butterflies. Oh, perfect, right? Props Where'd to you, knowing, dude. I like these orange seats. Where do you find that? Thrift store. These no, th Facebook these and that marketplace, too. baby. <laughs> Facebook like it's out of like a diner or something. That's from um, Amazon. Yeah, and we, that's from Facebook Marketplace. We found this and we painted it orange. It was black yeah. originally, I think. Painted the leather orange. Yeah, yeah. It was like from like old, like, like some smoke lounge in Orlando. Yeah, I could it was knock a hookah bowling less alley. About us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he could knock your less about us. <laughs> but like we're here to pick up the booze. Like da, 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 da. And he's on his phone. I was like, okay, we're just gonna grab whatever. It looks great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's sticky, though. Do you ever get an orange on your pants? You're like, dude. I'm trying to think. Like, <laughs> uh, it's, it happened it's, again. It's taking me back to the 80s in like a Pizza Hut booth or something. Yeah, dude. going for like Pizza Hut and Nickelodeon red, though. if yeah. they had a baby. Those red cups oh, bro. in the 90s, the Pizza oh, Hut, yeah. dude. Listen, I was going to wear a sweatshirt because me and Andrew match today, but it's, it's way too hot. Too hot. I took mine off, dude. Round table. So we just have round table hey, pizza? No, the 80s was like straw hat pizza and shakies. Remember Shakey's? No, I remember Round Table. Shakey's? Shakey's Pizza. Where'd you grow up? California. That's what we called my grandpa. Shakey's. <laughs> Shakey's. Yeah, that's what they called my grandpa with Parkinson's. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> sad. Guys. That'll be sad. sad. Cancel. <laughs> no. No. Sad. He actually enjoyed it. It was a term of endearment. <laughs> Shakey's. <laughs> oh, shit. Listen, well, here he comes Parkin Shakey's. He, li he loved Parkinson's, guys. Stop. Gosh. You don't know my grandpa. It's like, no. He branded you do. it. He used it. It was his brand. It was his thing. <laughs> it's his thing. It's my grandpa, too. Mm. Oh. oh, welcome back. So we started already. We're, We're here. We're great. here. We're, We're live, baby. Sense. It's good. That's how they do it. They get you to say all the things and then. Yep. Uh -huh. and like, oh, are we going? Like, okay. I mean, explosion. hypothetically, if you were to get canceled, what would you have got canceled for saying? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I mean, <laughs> we're not recording, are we? <laughs> Who'd you guys cool. vote for? Yeah. Tell us the worst thing you said off camera. How much, much money for? do you make right now? <laughs> hey, guys, it's Blurry Creatures. Blurry Creatures is here. Let's, Nate let's and Luke. Go. Nate and Luke, baby. What's your last name, Nate? Henry. Henry. Luke Rogers, Nate Henry. Yeah. All right. Was here with us. We're in uh, outside of Orlando, Florida. Sunday cool, baby. Sunday cool, ninjas and butterflies. Ba 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 ba. These guys We're loving these it. guys flew in just to hang out with us, which is an honor. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which yeah. I get it. And it and they've already <laughs> and they've already told us it's worth it. 
yeah. to them. Yeah. It's worth their time, their effort, their energy, being away from their families. They said, yeah. there's nowhere else we'd rather be. That's right. Especially yeah. when you feed us tacos. Yeah. I know. We, you it's did like feed them tacos. It's a low bar, guys. It's a low hey. bar. No, you walk in, the aesthetic just nails you, and you, you feel like you're at home. Yeah, you see the, you you see the pink alligators. You see like, the Pray for Grandma? Vegans flag. Who? And, <laughs> people you know, are, people it, have it just asked starts. what our studio smells like. Can you guys tell them what it smells like? Yeah, first What first it smells like? It smells like just a lot of testosterone. Nice. Mixed with maybe maybe someone didn't wash one shirt. <laughs> That's fair. Or you know. two. Or two. I would say, is that is that more underwear? Is that ketchup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that ketchup and, and, and onions. Ketchup underwear. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my mouth. Hey, on second thoughts, those tuxedos, guys. It's, I mean. it's thick. <laughs> it's thick in this air. Yeah. Um, no, you got to bring a lady in here sometimes, so it's, I'm sure yeah. it smells great. We yeah. do, and it's yeah, his wife, Lily, my but, wife, and she. Um, but she's used to your smell. Exactly. She is. Yeah. So that's my testosterone ketchup smell. So that I think onions. it's pretty much odor agnostic. It, yeah, mm. it's nice in here. It doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not sure if that smells <laughs> yeah, exactly right. what I'm smelling. Not sure I can define any of that. No, that is true though. There is like a secret smell where your house smells a certain way, but you don't know. And then you're like, you ask somebody, hey, "What does it smell like in here? Does it smell good or not?" Like you can't smell it. No, yeah. you can't. You get it. You get immune to it after a while. No, it's it's a it's a thing. I've always wondered that. Honestly, like, the way to figure it out is to go into your closet and pull some sheets out that you haven't used in a long time and smell those. That's what your house smells like. Really? I, I just I just, do you think I that counts the, for the closet as well? I don't know. Because I pulled out a shirt the other day that I haven't worn in like bad. a year, and I pulled out and smelled. That's like, that smell. Yeah, I wonder oh, if that's that what your house smells. Dude, like. rough. I go into my yeah. closet and it's so warm in there because there's no vent and we keep the door closed and so we walk in it's like this humid closet i'm like this is this doesn't represent the rest of my home so there's no <laughs> so you're way you're telling me my house smells like a sweaty dude yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah that's just you and your closet you just have some mothballs hanging up in i here. was just about you know to say I mean? my grandma's closet the mothball smell dude Intox- i, I kind of love it intoxicating yeah yeah. Also gives. You I mean, cancer. I don't know if mo- <laughs> also, but I, I love it. Yeah, right. I don't <laughs> know if stop. moths and butterflies go together, but yeah, some people think think so. Mm. so. Yeah. Listen, I don't care what you say. I don't care if it gives me cancer. I love it. <laughs> there's, there's, you can fill in a lot of blanks. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> um, so, guys, we usually start out with a song. Do you want a song? Yeah. Do you like a song? I've been no, waiting I, for a I song. want a song. Luke likes to sing on our oh, yeah. podcast. So. Well, if you if you feel like you. Can, if you can tune in, <laughs> go for it. So normally I just play guitar, but I know you have a background in music, so I oh, brought you guitar. Get him on it. Get Big Red <laughs> no, on, I'm the, good. on I'm the reti- I'm retired. All right, he's retired. I don't even know what song it is. What get chords on are they? Yeah, just talk, you talk see, national see you, numbers. You, you know three songs, one, you can do a worship one, song. Come the on. whole thing is 1-4, one, and then it goes 1-5-4 uh, in the key of C. This is where we find out Nate has never played in a band. I've never. I, I played bass, so he's like Ashley Simpson. Like, did you start the track already? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> that was so good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pretend like I'm just, playing. Just act like you're strumming. <laughs> no one's gonna hear you. It's fine. All right. Well, you know, Freebird. <laughs> guess we'll just come up with something. Yeah, we'll just dabble. We'll just dabble. <laughs> we'll reach in. Bip, 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 bip. We got some really cool guests ah. today, so maybe we can tie them in somehow. What like blur- blurry creatures? Possibly. I mean, like I mean, I don't know. That's I don't know how idea. important they are, but yeah, not important. But you know, that's a challenge. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll see I if like we can it. put All right. something in. All right, here we go. Yeah. It started with a picture long ago, swimming in a lake so very well. Everyone would look. And everyone would know The story of the monster they would tell <laughs> She was born in the land of Scotland A life that feels so very messy Cause I can only imagine What she's thinking, what she's swimming <gasps> Knowing that her name is Nessie <laughs> And we <laughs> said, hey The blurry creature Through the woods late at night. Oh, I, I thought that was <laughs> for you. Looking through the woods. Oh, let's do that again. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, this is so He's good. walking through the woods late at night. 
Looking up for cameras with his eyes. Yes. Going through those places with unfamiliar faces. We looked at Bigfoot and he shouts and cries. And he said, Hey, you blurry creatures. And find them now. Hey, go, go, go home, you, you blurry creatures. Creatures is in the house. Wow, I love it. We're gonna need to. I, ninjas are butterflies, we baby. We might need that. We might need to just yeah to we license to, that for the show. Yeah. <laughs> that, hey, we you, that you was have, special, guys. I mean, that was yeah, yeah, that yeah. was you the know best intro. We I, I don't know where yeah, I don't know where I thought the bar would be, but you exceeded it. We re- yeah. we raised it. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. No, that was um, amazing. Episode thirty six. Ninjas of butterflies. 63. We, what did I say? <laughs> 36. 36. I, dude, I, hey, a lot of people have that problem. <laughs> what is that called out. when you Close. mix it back Dyslexia. and forth? Dyslexia. Dyslexia. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I have that, dude. Episode 63. We could not be more excited. That was awesome. The fact that uh, Blurry oh, Creatures. Thank you. Yeah, we wrote that like two, an two hour before ago. I left to go pick him up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's off of that song. Uh, what's it? It's Big and Rich. Holy Water. Holy Water. Big and Rich. <laughs> you know the legendary band Big and Rich. You no, know Big and Rich. Yeah, <laughs> everyone knows that. Big band. Ken- hey, Big Kenny and John Rich. Yeah, yeah so been John Rich's house. He's got a guitar-shaped pool. Are you really? And an elevator. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, look at that. Full <laughs> circle, baby. Maybe don't show him that song. <laughs> I'm like, hey, John, I, whose number I don't have. Hey, let me. <laughs> it might, you might want to sign these guys. They got some. They got some talent. He's yeah. like, that melody sounds a little. No, familiar. we need to. <laughs> if we get sued by Big and Rich, that's the way I want to go out. Yeah. yeah. You I give agree. me an idea though we, we might need to put out a cryptic record you know like about all the the blurry creatures but it's it's just like the blurry ep dude it's let's, just, make, yeah. let's make a blurry band ep okay just dude. singing all about i'm attitude. pretty all worthless about the blurry. Uh, you get like all you your like favorite uh, podcasts and you get your favorite yeah. podcast and band dudes to come up with like funny songs about sasquatch dude i love that let's mm-hmm. do it okay no um, one steal that idea that's ours switch move i know we just put it out yeah. uh, switch foot Squid. Hey, hey, speaking of, why am I spe- so dyslexic today? I don't know. Andy, speaking of Squidfoot, speaking of Switch Foot, <laughs> Switch Move. Hey, do you know they're going to be out move. on tour? You know who they're with out on tour this next year? Creed and Switch Foot and Creed. Three doors down. No, Squid Foot and Creed. <laughs> Squid Foot, bro. Hey, there Squid is, Foot. <laughs> we're, I'm a, we're a little older than you guys, but no, Creed there is a my... summer of '99 tour coming. This is totally off, but it is Creed is back together. And they are switchfoots going out, and <laughs> something's really awesome about that. Like, <laughs> you may not like any of that music. I, I like switchfoot, all right. But you might not like any of the music. But you want to come just to see this, right? Like Scott Stapp doing Scott oh, yeah. Stapp Dude. things, like, like ha- you know, halftime at the Cowboys game where he's like. Guys are flying dude. around on, on oh, yeah. ribbons and, and stuff. In the I mean, jersey, dude. I, let's I, go. We've re- dude. I've actually reached out to him on the Ninjas uh, TikTok and asked him, like, hey, when are you coming on the pod? Because they're, they are – Promoting their new tour. Dude, he, so li- like, he lives in Brentwood. Like I said, this Nashville. is perfect. Dude, I've, I've got a great Scott Sapp story. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, I got a buddy who's a, like a pretty well off. They live in a really nice neighborhood. I don't know how else to put this, but Scott Sapp lives in the neighborhood. And my friend is like 60 something years old and he has no idea who Creed is. And he's like, there's this guy. And he goes down to the pool and acts like he owns this place. And he's the biggest jerk and he's kicking things in the pool. And, he's, and I was like, oh, okay. You got a new neighbor? And he's like, you're this guy named Scott Stapp. <laughs> And I was like, uh, classic Scott. Yeah, I've heard of him. I'm like from Creed. He's like, I don't know. And I'm like, so you like everyone in your neighborhood, but the guy from Creed. This is my favorite story about Scott Stapp. You need to change, dude. (laughs) If Scott does Scott Stapp doesn't like you, you need to change. That's my opinion. Man, I'm like Marshall. I uh, I love that you have no idea. It's like that that one dad who there's that famous meme where he's taking a, a, a selfie and he's like, yeah. look who it is. It's Justin Beaver. And it's like <laughs> Beaver's behind him. Yeah. You're like, this is the guy. And he's like, I don't know who this is, but this guy's a jerk. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He thinks he owns the pool. He does not own the pool. <laughs> no. But speaking of Creed, I have a question for the day. <laughs> that's, a good, go. that's a really good transition. There it is. Thank you, Josh. You're welcome. You're welcome. Today's question, sent in by our viewer. I'll take it from here. Do what? I said I'll take it from here. With a question? 
Yeah. Because it's been 63 episodes, Josh, and I've never been able to control a question. I just, I have a question that's been laying on my mind. It's been laying on my heart for years. Okay. And I, and I just, I just want to ask it. <laughs> is All right. cool? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's real serious. Oh, this is, I like this vibe. This is okay. weird, but. Question of the day. Sent in by you. Sent in by me. <laughs> Did Bigfoot kidnap them? <laughs> it's okay. What? That was a good first start. Yeah, that was a good it's start. all right. That's coming. It's okay. Did Bigfoot kidnap my daddy? Oh. Yes. I've. Yes. I mean, it's definitely not because if we're gonna dad. If we're gonna interrupt. I mean, my much. my dad interrupt. You know, my dad not to interrupt, but like my dad left as a, as a very young child, and I never got to know him. So yeah, yeah. And a lot of people have said maybe that's why. Maybe so. I'm asking you today. Did Bigfoot kidnap my daddy? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Like, why is he? Why is he gone? Because why else would he be gone if, like, if he's not kidnapped by Bigfoot? Like, why else? Like, is it like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not because he didn't love you, or um, just didn't want you to be in his life, or. So you say no? No, I'm saying. What do you you say? Did Bigfoot kidnap my daddy? I, I, I think he did. Like yeah, yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah, yeah, like why yeah. else? Why would he? Why would? Why would he be? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. honestly, that's, <laughs> why we're, that's why we're here. Yeah, now, this is a big moment for you, and I, I'm, you know, I'm glad that you led wow. yourself to water, if you will, in that sort of metaphor. But you, uh, yeah, absolutely, Andrew. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think he, I think he did. Yeah, 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 I, mean, yeah, I, yeah I did. Bigfoot, that's where your dad is. Bigfoot just took him. Yeah, and he's pretty elusive, man. That's why yeah, I'm seeing him. I mean, sure he's hard to find. Yeah, I'm sure he misses you. Yeah, right, right guys. Like he's, he's probably riding. On a horse somewhere. He's just yeah, probably fine. Fun, just, <laughs> just protecting people. He's, yeah, he's riding on a horse yeah. next to Bigfoot. Yeah, just riding okay. on a horse in the sunset with Bigfoot. Okay, well you're gonna hear first. Bigfoot kidnapped Andy's dad, and that's why he's been absent <laughs> his whole life. Welcome to the show. Got bagged. <laughs> Did I say ninja? I meant butterfly. The butterfly is no doubt one of God's <laughs> most. You were martial arts! Fuck it, Jonathan! Man, daddy issues. That's one way to start a show, <laughs> isn't it? We always somehow bring up Andy's dad being absent. So You guys are so yeah, this is fine. incredible. This is amazing. Ugh. You're all right. We, we also like to start off. I'm um, having fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am having Me fun. Me too, dude. I'm, I'm having, having a blast. fun. <laughs> we, do, we don't get to have fun a lot. Well, we do, but we... It's a different know. kind of fun. Yeah, you guys, talk about, fun. you guys talk a lot about conspiracies and... It gets heavy. A lot of weird stuff, and that's not a lot of... Not a lot of he- so that's... And I know you guys... Well, I, I was about to say, we have this thing that we typically do with our guests, and um, I don't know how much you guys have seen of our uh, podcast, but we typically start off by asking a question... Um, to and I guess you guys do the same thing. Yeah, you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, we always kind of funny. Like one specific question. Um, but we're gonna ask, uh, what are your thoughts on big feet? Big feet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not really. Weird, right? into, I don't know. I'm not really into big feet. Oh man, yeah. You can make a lot of like money. Like that one. That's a <laughs> that's a big foot. You can make a lot of money with, with big that's feet. Also, that's two Those big toes feet. Are, ooh, what are your thoughts on me. big feet, though? Like Hobbit feet, like sure. hairy Just and big, big feet. Just in big general. feet in general. Mm, no. I mean, there are certain people that are feet people, you know. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino uh, is a foot person. So is Rex. Because you guys talk Rex, about Rex Ryan's a foot guy. I know you guys talk about yeah. big foot a lot. Yeah, uh, which yeah. that is a big foot. But those are many feet or <laughs> big, many yeah. foots, as you would say, feet. Then. So what'd you Man, say, big one, foot? Look at that right one. That's what'd you pay for that picture? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, that's multiple. It's a whole family of big feet. Oh, that, I mean, that one's special, it's too. Big, hey, come on. Big boy, no Paul. Oh. <laughs> I, I just had to add Kermit's feet in the beginning. <laughs> there we go. Big feet. Of all the, celebr- all the celebrities, big feet. Kermit's we don't, we don't ask that question. We just wanted to play off your guys'. No, I, oh, I what I do like you guys it. think of Bigfoot? What do you guys think of Bigfoot? Oh, man. Crazy, I lo- right? I love him. He's the greatest. He's what you, changed my life. Okay. What are your thoughts on the newest... Video well, well, of Bigfoot because I know on, you guys wait, mentioned. Let that. me preface this: everyone watching this right now, yeah, this is not going to be anything like you've ever watched before. We're just going to talk about the craziest stuff. Yeah, perfect. That's because not, we're not going to talk really about abnormal. TikToks. We got we got the dudes from Blurry Creatures who are based out of Tennessee. Right, they're down in Florida. 
They just got here. They're leaving tonight. So we're just going to be asking them all the questions that we could possibly ask them. Like, where did Andy's dad go? Yeah. What do you right. think of Big Feet? We figured that out. So what do yeah. we figure of Big Feet? Um, I want to hear y'all's thoughts on Big Foot. Big the, Foot. The, the actual, Big Foot. The Squatch. The Is, one with the Big Feet. <laughs> big Foot! foot. Ah. Yeah. You know, the the Big Foot's <laughs> foot. If we're starting there. Yeah. It's it's an amazing foot. <laughs> Which I'm serious. The Sasquatch foot can bend in the middle. What? Yeah, it's got like a hinge in it. Okay. So it can like go straight up a mountain because it has like a hinge. So that's how Whoa. That's how mm. big it is because usually it's either a curve and people who get flat feet yeah. are made fun of. <laughs> but yeah. the next person would be an angled in the middle of the flat foot. So they're like... And the, that's what Bigfoot like is. They're the gods. Yeah, like, apparently. I don't know. Yeah, if you get made fun of being flat foot, if your foot's... I'm, I'm just saying I saw somebody on TikTok last night that said like they just like a dude that just put his foot down on the ground and it was the flattest foot I've ever seen. And so, like, everyone has a little bit of an arch. Bigfoot has to have such a foot that's so big that you're saying it has an arch in the middle? Like, there's it has like, a there's hinge. A, they call it the mid-tarsal break. hinge. They call it the mid-tarsal break. Are we, are we talking, like, toe to heel, like a V? No, we're talking no, right talking in the though? middle, right in the middle. Like Oh, like, like, like your toes go up. Yeah, like his toes can go up. Yeah, wow. so you can see it in the footprints of the Sasquatch, but, you know, more of, the, like, the scientist's we brought on some scientists on the show who talk about, you know, the anomalies of the foot itself that it can't be faked because it's so it's such a unique foot itself. But like, obviously they're not wearing shoes. Like no one would think to fake it like that. Yeah. Because they're also measuring like the weight, like right. they're, the they're weight. measuring like the level of the ground, the weight that it would take to put down. And so there's a lot of that goes into it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're an expert and you see these casts. And you're like, this thing is not fake. It's yeah. not. It's, it's just uh, so many little details here that you can't fake, and you'd have to know anatomy, and you'd have to be able to, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah. the foot itself is sort of, I think, obviously that's where they found the tracks. You know, the guys that were, there was a story where like Sasquatch started where they, these construction workers up near where they filmed the, the Bigfoot were seeing these massive tracks kind of around the area. Mm. And then they came back and they saw some tractor tires like being thrown around. And a lot of the dudes quit. They were like working on the roads. And no, like, Scott Stapp. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scott Stapp. That, that guy's thing. a jerk, man. And that's how so, Creed was started. That's a root, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, that's where the Bigfoot, you know, kind of the, the name comes from. You know, it's kind of stuck in the uh, in the mud there. But then. You what's, know, was, what's like the uh, indigenous, like Native Americans, what would they refer to Bigfoot as? There was over what? I think there was over 100 names. No way. In Indian. Yeah. For Sasquatch, which is probably the most popular okay, one, yeah. But there's there's a lot of names for this creature, and that's kind of where our show started. I was gonna say because like that's that, that's the whole premise of where you guys yeah hit off the ground. Well, we, it was Sasquatch, it was Bigfoot. So, yeah, we wanted to start somewhere that was sort of a good launching point, and I think Sasquatch is the most popular of all the cryptid creatures, especially He's, American culture. Yeah, that's right. yeah. 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 Well, he's seen all over the world. Um, different versions of this really? thing. Yeah, well, well, we like were talking about Yeti. a British Bigfoot. Yeah, actually, I have never interview. known that. I've never yeah. heard anything overseas. There's the yeah. Yeren, the Yeti. Okay. Um, What's the Brit the British Bigfoot? They call him like the, the wild, wild man. The wild man. And there's a bunch of stories and uh, you'd be good friends. And and yeah. Track. And, I mean, they have. There's this lore around it, and there's sightings of this on the British Isles. And we were talking to Hugh Newman this week, who's been on Ancient Aliens. He's been on our show a couple times, and he was we. Were, he wanted to read. He was the first. Actually, we've done two interviews this week, and this, for the first time, really, we've had two repeat guests want to revisit that question. Right? Like, thought, what are your thoughts on Bigfoot? Which yeah, is how we start yeah. all our shows. And he was saying that, um, that you don't think about England and the UK with being a lot of wild spaces, but there really is. Yeah. And so there's enough of enough sightings and and encounters there that there's something going on. He talked a lot about a guy named Nick Redfern who wrote a book about. Bigfoot in the UK, if you will, but they call him the wild man. And um, it's, I mean, they're everywhere though. Like you, you've got, and it, there's the one in Australia, there's there's the uh, Aaron Beck. Orang Pende. Erect Pende. Erect Pende. Erect. Something. Something like that. <laughs> so, so, Southeast somewhere, somewhere, that's somewhere. That's somewhere, different, that's, that's different all that matters. Animal. Someone's giggling. Well, there's more. That Orang, I think yeah. it's Orang Pende. Orang Pende, thank you. That's, uh, is that China? <laughs> I don't know. No, now, it's Vietnam. Now, Vietnam. It, it like, it's similar, like, is that in every culture? 
like in in most cultures, there's always a Bigfoot kind of like because we've seen like dragons and angels right. have always like in, in in literature of cultures like is that the same thing with Bigfoot? Well, I don't yeah. think it's ambiguous. I don't think there's no because some of them are smaller, like yeah. the North American ones are the sort of the biggest ones. Yeah. And some of the ones in like Australia are, sh- are shorter, four foot, Weird. five foot. Six you know what's foot. fascinating about that when you ask about the Native American stuff is that like you realize that like when they have the totem poles, right? That every one of those is a real animal on the totem pole, except for Bigfoot, right? So you have this oh, idea that like these are all the real things. So why, why would they put something that they don't believe to be real? They they thought yeah, that yeah. this the Sasquatch or the Wild Man was the protector of the forest. Yeah, right? and so that's how there was. If you talk to the Native American folks that 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 have passed down the traditions, they'll say that yeah, there's you don't go these places, and they you these the protector of the forest, but you don't you leave them alone. You kind of so did they fear space. him, or was it like a respect kind of thing? It was both. I think it was yeah. it was the kind of like you know fear of God, right? You respect God completely, and yeah. Not to we're not diminishing. So you think Bigfoot that. is God? <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, 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 breaking news. No, I mean, but, yeah, yeah. No, it, but the analogy there is that yeah, yeah, yeah like, I got you. You respect this thing, so you stay away from. You got to be on your game here. Yeah, yeah you do. It, 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 oh, they just you guys are ninjas. We just yeah, yeah. we just <laughs> these are ninjas. I'll get you. Ding ding. No, Sasquatch is is fascinating, and the show started there with the big guy. Yeah, and we started bringing on dudes talking about Sasquatch, which leads into like other big. Beings, and we start talking about giants and things. So, is is Bigfoot the gateway drug? It is conspiracy theorist. <laughs> oh yeah, I've I've heard uh, recently. I heard last night that if you know a person, that's who our owns, first episode. And that's what it's titled. Yeah, yeah. If uh, they say if if you know somebody who owns chickens, they're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> that. because, that's funny because if you own chickens, you probably have somewhat of a distrust in the food department in America. And then if you have a tr- mistrust in the food d- department, then you probably have a trust in the pharmaceuticals, and it just continues from there. So it's like owning chickens is a gateway let's, drug let's, for like, conspiracy let's, podcast. Let's, let's make that the question. Yeah. Guy, everyone listening, do you own chickens? I'm interested. Let's Ooh. do a poll. Yeah, I would love to know. Yeah. I have chickens. I do too. <laughs> yes. Luke? I do not. My wife always wants Yet. it, but it's... Yet. It's, it, I always say this is something else that I'm going to have to take care of. Yeah. That, you know, I, I don't want to add that to my list. Oh, last they seem night? pretty easy. Last they night? Are, are we, we forget to feed them, like, sometimes quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, we, la- we will have chickens at some last point. Last night. Same thing with kids, though. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty easy as long like as you kids and chickens, feed them every once in a while. Same, right? you, have to, you have to put them up <laughs> there. Last night I was in my underwear at, walking through the backyard. It's 30 degrees outside. Everyone nice. close your eyes and imagine. Stepping on walnuts. Yeah, what a picture that is. And I was just, are they in there? I hope they're in there. Lock them up. Just a toss of food. And yeah. Hope for the best. So no, guys, they're the best. You definitely saw the video of the Bigfoot yeah. in Colorado. Yeah. We see we see them all now. We get them all. No, the, the one, one, the one, one that's on yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that was fake. Totally. So I, you think? It has to be fake. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why, why do you think it's fake? That's what I'm curious. Because it, lo- it looks like such a specific video. It seems weird. It does seem weird that he would sit down in the middle of a well, mountain. There's like a Sasquatch trailer company like right around the corner. Yeah. And they like posted a thing on their Instagram that says we didn't do it. Um, of didn't. And it looked like a manicured suit. Like, yeah, it looked like he had just got out of like some 70s disco dance club. And yeah. you're like, this is just I, I, I don't I understand don't why so. Bigfoot would just get up and like realize that you're filming or re- just see you down. and then just sit down. I'm like, nah. Yeah. I d- it d- didn't seem yeah, real, yeah. and so it's kind of like aliens to me. It's perfect like, spot. If it if it looks like an alien of what I thought, it's like it probably doesn't yeah. exist because if it's anything like what humans mm-hmm. conceived aliens to look like, then it's probably not real. I mean, there's a hoax, and then there's like clever marketing. Yeah, I think it's in the clever marketing yeah s- space. That blurry line. It's not like uh, we're trying to hoax you. It's like yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, well done. So Josh has seen UFOs. John, Josh has seen at least two Sasquatch. UFOs in his life, and I say UFOs because it's unidentified right sure, now. Yeah, close. And it's one of those things yeah. where, how do you guys have you ever had an experience like that where you can't explain something and it's like it's just so out there that you're like, I know it's real, but I know it sounds crazy when I explain it. Yeah, because I have a ghost experience like that, uh-huh. but I don't have anything his type of like like a UFO type of thing. So like Luke's got some we we've told a few stories. I had I saw like a werewolf creature as a kid. That's the only thing I've ever seen, and it did. It took me a long time to put it together that that's what I saw. And you're and you're fully confident in what you saw. Mm. Yeah. See. Yeah. This it's was California. California. Yeah. And the in the parent in my in my parents' house there was like a 
a screen door that went out from like a sunroom. I was probably like seven, six, seven years old. Yeah. And I remember, you know, I was the youngest, you know, and so you, you're not in the mindset where you're the oldest child where you can say anything you want and everyone's going to believe you. Yeah. yeah. And I saw this thing and I, I remember looking at it multiple times and it was like in the window. It was kind of grinning at me and it had this like red eyes. And I was, I was like, this is not going away when I look. And I screamed and ran and told my parents. But, you know, the, the reason I remember it, though, is because I would I would run from one room to the next for for years after that. Yeah. And I wouldn't look out that window. But the, the memory itself is, you know, it ha it's kind of fuzzy. It's kind of blurry. I guess. But it happened. But it happened. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. How do you. But then I was listening to Sasquatch shows and people were saying that they see the dog man, the dog man, the dog man. I'm like. The heck is a dog man? I know what the Sasquatch yeah. is. What is the, what is the dog man? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what you saw. I saw the same thing. I don't. Jeez. What is the dog man? Yeah, I've it's heard the, the werewolf. Mothman. It's the werewolf. Does it walk up on yeah. two yeah. legs? Yeah, it does both. Sometimes it runs off, but it's, it's your classic werewolf. Is it like the Harry the, Potter, the um, the Grim Lupin? Yeah, yeah, Lupin. Yeah, kind of, but it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's just your classic werewolf. Most of them have the werewolf face. Um, upright. Werewolf. Now, what you, pretty legs. terrifying. Nate, yeah. What are your actual thoughts on that? Like, do you think it was an actual physical person who turned into war, or do you think it was something spiritual and here's a what we're doing? Realm? I've listened to probably ten of your podcasts so far yeah. since meeting you guys, and you just opened up this. It's you're going into all these webs. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just ter <laughs> it's terrifying. It's when crazy I think about it. It's like it's like sitting with Santa Claus. <laughs> you just want to ask you him like, like everything it. about the North yeah. Pole. How do you yeah. eat so many cookies in one night? How yeah, <laughs> I, need, I need that. How's it possible? I'm <laughs> bloated, dude. So this is this is where <laughs> yeah. we're at. So we're gonna the werewolf. Yeah, like um, there are were creatures. What is where? What does were mean? Like, what is that? Like, what does the word mean? It's kind of been like, um, from my understanding, it's that's more the shape shifting. Okay, so it's like, like they can take on these forms. So I think you have, a, I think you, what we've discovered on our show most of the time is you have sort of an all of the above, yeah, thing going on a lot. Can, is Sasquatch an animal? Yeah. Is Sasquatch paranormal? Yeah. Correct. Can he yeah. go from our dimension somewhere else? Yeah. Can he throw rocks with perfect accuracy? Yeah. So can it's he, can he stay silent in the woods right next to you? Yeah. I I, I don't know. Can, does he come on and go on in UFOs? Yeah. Like So he's in the same category as those types of things where it's it seems. Where it's something in out of out of our dimension. It's just like, it's out of it's, something. It's just a broad Oh, that's scary. Well, I, mean, I think I think think of like Job where it talks about like the meeting of the heavenly beings yeah. or the heavenly creatures and stuff, you know, it's like they didn't say like the meeting of the angels or like all yeah. that stuff, you know. It's just like it's like so broad, you know. It's like then Satan or this whatever. Is, well, was I think there. we talk about like, this on the show, Josh. I I think there's this we have this medieval understanding of of the supernatural, the spiritual realm, right? Because it's uh, it becomes very binary. I think in a lot of our minds, it's just like it's God and angels, you know. But uh, angels in and of itself is a Greek word that just means messenger. It's actually a job title, yeah. right? And then if you go in the Old Testament, there's other titles for the host of heaven, if you will, these, uh, you know, Enoch talks about watchers. So, and that is a job title as well. These are, they were, they were like sentinels. They're watching. Yeah. What, are, what are they watching? I'm not, not exactly sure. Maybe they're, if you think of if heaven as a kingdom, perhaps they're sort of like lo the lookouts, right? And, and that was their job. So I always say this and I, and I, and I, and I'm, I really do believe this. I think if we look at the, the magnitude of creation around us, right? There are millions of different of types of, of life on earth here, right? Yeah. Um, that we're discovering every day. Uh, new stuff every day, mostly yeah. small stuff. But yeah. every once in a while, you have something that comes out of the jungles in Southeast Asia, and you go, that's weird. That, that's something they had never seen before. Yeah. Right? Um, that's where we're at, right? But So I think that it, for us to have this idea that, that heaven is just this place where there's just these winged sort of pseudo-human things, and God himself on his throne is probably very short-sighted. It's probably not as not so binary. In fact... I, we contend that there's a lot of things that we learn about heaven in the scriptures that talk about roads and walls, and we talk about manna being the bread of heaven, right? So if, so if, if you want to reverse engineer that, if you will, then you need grain, and you need to grind grain, and you have to be yeah. doing that and farming and those kind of things in heaven. Perhaps that happens. Um, and also, I, I think that we only get a really a glimpse of what's happening in that space. We do have the stories about you know about the fall of of Satan and, and Lucifer and. You have you know this this rebellion in heaven, but 
as far as like specifics, we don't get a lot. Yeah. But I think there's a lot that can be explained by being like, well, if this is what we have here, I don't know why we'd think it'd be the diversity, if you will, of 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 creation in the heavens. It would be any different in in the sense of at least that's that's kind of where I'm following now because you have too many things. As Nate said, like you have this. Bigfoot creature, and you have you have all of these cryptid, these different things that that ex, ex, exhibit these supernatural type behaviors, and yeah. you know, there's got to be something to there being a lot more than we than maybe we've thought about it. And I think that the you know, the Middle Ages and and all of the Renaissance painters didn't really do us any favors because you get all these like yeah. little babies with wings and things floating. You have the you have these beautiful works of art, but they are it really gives you a very truncated you know, sort of perception yeah. of what might be in the heavenly realms. And and you're right about Job, right? The host, the sons of God cried for joy at the creation of the earth. So there's this, and that's a very broad term, right? So but you yeah. have this, yeah. this, ter- this terminology of all these heavenly beings, and it talks about the host of heaven, and they're all kind of watching as God's doing what he's doing. And and I I don't think it's it's maybe the way that we've always thought about things with just these winged dudes, more yeah. or less, like just cruising around, yeah. playing harps, and like, and... and totally. And, and doing things. That so. was going to be one of my questions. Was so I heard on one of your podcasts. Maybe it was with a uh, Al, was his name Ali. Ali, with Ali, yeah, yeah, Seattleton. One ninety nine. Yeah, one ninety nine. That was a dope episode. Not not yeah. not, right. not in one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> where he talked about the um, just Christianity throughout history and like the uh, Renaissance era and the Reformation era and like how they depicted things and stuff. Do you? My question is: Do you think that we? now are moving into a new era of understanding the supernatural, if you will, like with, I guess with UFOs coming out and like, just, I don't know. I'm just like, do you think we're entering this new era of understanding like the mysteries of God are continuing to be revealed in this new era? Yeah. How do you feel about these new revelations too? You know, I feel like, you know, the information age, we've we've definitely got more information, more context to make sense of things. I think a lot of the guys in interpreting things throughout history did the best they could with what they had. You know, you had all these guys like Luther and Calvin kind of coming up trying to make sense of the Bible. They didn't have the Book of Enoch and things like yeah. this that, yeah. that clearly the New, the New Testament writers had. Yeah. You know, we did an episode the other night talking about Jude and all the weird stuff in Jude where... Satan and and Michael the archangel are fighting over the bones of Moses. Yeah, like how do you make sense of that in the in the Middle Ages? Like these, you just kind of pass over. Yeah, you just pass the, over. Yeah. How do you, how do you make sense the, of it? But now. also, how do you how do you apply it to your life? Why is that information valuable? Well, yeah. There's something. Like, why, going why do you even care about it? But it's like, and so trying to understand what's the relevancy to you as a person, like that's tough to it, like. Yeah. You see that. Well, you're trying to understand that there's this cosmic war going on in the Bible. There's these two kingdoms at war with each other. Yeah. And if you read it just like a rational, you know, modern day human being that goes to Walmart and comes home and watches Netflix, you're never going to. It's, it's like it's it's it feels like a Harry Potter book. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. feel like anything that actually happened. It's wild. It doesn't feel real. But I think what we're trying to what we've discovered on our show is that the world's always been weird. It's always been blurry. There's always been Sasquatch in the woods and it's, there's always been this weird stuff happening around us. And now we have phones so we can take videos of UFOs. Mm -hmm. But like Bob Lazar said on one of his um, interviews recently, I saw. Do you know who Bob Lazar is? He's the area 51 guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of the UFOs he was talking about was ancient. They dug it up. Uh, It was on an archeological site. So confirmed, confirmed, like, yeah. like, like by non theological people, non Christian people. Well, this is, yeah, this, this is, is government this is, agencies, this is government that agency. have technology right, that's right. supposedly like Hollywood made yeah. and it's fake. And a lot of Christians think it's fake because they don't understand how to put that in their paradigm, but it's ancient. And then we, uh, we did an episode on famous UFO battle in Nuremberg in the 1500s where it looks like you have UFOs fighting each other in the sky and everyone saw it, and it was documented, and there was a guy that painted a painting of it. And we interviewed Dr. Diana Pasolka, and she, she got to go into the Vatican archives, and, it, and she said there's this whole wing dedicated to UFOs. I, I saw I, it. I brought that up. Yeah, like, like the they talk about like how, like how even like how old the pages are where it like deteriorates. Yeah. If you t- yeah. Like you touch it in the wrong yeah. way, yeah. it falls apart, and you yeah. ruin also, history. So the church has been documenting these things in, in, in the context of 
sort of miraculous happenings, but also contextualizing some of it more so in the in in the later times now as as these sort of paranormal UFO experiences. And they have a thousand years of in the Vatican Library, which you can't get into unless you're yeah. Catholic and you have special permission. They've been tracking this stuff. So yeah, I mean, that's your original question. I think it's it's, it's fascinating, right? We it, there seems to be this ramping up and more and more things are happening. I think part of that is a product of the fact of the nature of the connectedness of all of us, right? So we have the internet and we have instant communication. And y'all are stars on yeah. TikTok and YouTube and all these things, right? <laughs> of course we are. Big stars. <laughs> Big stars. Um, but no, I mean, yeah. like, so you can have inter- information, you know, travel instantaneously and everyone has a camera in their pocket, yeah. right? So I think that's part of it. But I also think that there is, we are coming very close to, to what, the ufology community and what most people would consider disclosure. We have the House Oversight Committee at Congress doing hearings on UAPs and UFOs, are forcing the three-letter agencies and the you know the unpaid portions, unelected, not unpaid, very well paid, <laughs> unelected portions of our government yeah. that are are working not governed by the people in the sense of there's no oversight from the people because these people aren't elected that have been operating and keeping keeping things from. Um, the American public, and, and I know there's this there's this threat of or this narrative out there that like, oh, the government is saying this, so we can't believe it. And and me, Nate and I have contended since this came out in this year. This is really interesting timing for us to employ creatures because we're talking about UFOs and stuff. But um, this is not the government. In fact, these are whistleblowers that now have legal protection um, because mostly because of what happened to Ed Snowden, and now he's yeah. he, you know he's a Set the president. He's a, he's, yeah. yeah, he's a he's a political asi- asylumee in Russia because he disclosed the NSA was spying on all of us, right? Mm-hmm. And but now there's legal protections, and so we have people within our government that were parts of programs that are saying I can legally protect it and I can share this now because these things are going on behind the scenes, and the American public needs to know. And frankly, the Congress doesn't know. That's why they're holding hearings. So this is not a narrative being pushed by the United States government. This is something that happens worldwide, and in fact, it's we're getting closer to this disclosure, I believe. And so but that's, yeah. a lo- that's a long answer, but what I think is coming is if there is disclosure, this is going to be something that, that especially people in, ch- in the church and Christians are going to have a very hard time contextualizing, right? Mm-hmm. Without really having a supernatural worldview of the Bible. Yeah. Because the existence of extraterrestrials, and in fact, when we talk about angels, and it, you know, by definition are not of earth, we are of earth. As sons of Adam... You know, we are of earth. Angels are not. Yeah. They, yeah. The sons of God stood and cheered when the earth was created. So by definition, they'd be extraterrestrials. And this is kind of where our show goes in some ways is how do you contextualize all of yeah. this stuff from, yeah. a, from a biblical worldview? And and I think that it's important to have these discussions like we're going to happen today because if we don't consider this and have these conversations, you guys have great conversations about all kinds of really cool stuff, and I love that. Dumb stuff, but, but that's yeah. what, that's what <laughs> fun <laughs> stuff. But fun stuff, and, and but you yeah. need to have those, right? This, yeah. There's no, dis- yeah. discourse needs to exist around this. Well, stuff. yeah, I mean, that's we were talking about that on the way here of just like it's so cool to have a place to where because you guys you started off just talking about Bigfoot, right? And it's it evolved into this whole not even world, this whole universe, and Blurryverse. Dimensions and stuff like that, Blurverse, dude. and <laughs> and that's where that's the I feel like the path that we um, <clears throat> might say unfortunately started going down because it's a, becomes a little all consuming no, at times. I was, I was you know? unfortunately because like we started no, the podcast cool. like yeah, yeah like we like we didn't know where it would end up. We just knew what we wanted to do, and we love what we're passionate about. And the whole idea is behind being a Christian is God fills you with a passion. You follow that passion. He uses it however he wants. And so like yeah. this, that's what this podcast has turned into. It's funny. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's terrifying. It's anxiety filling. And it's also kind of just like warning us like, Hey, <clears throat> may like, this is a possibility of well, what's yeah. happening in the future. What is your response? How will you react yeah. to yeah. that yeah. news? And the podcast is free too. It's like this um, thing that, it's like you can communicate with all kinds of people and you don't have any really middlemen or any yeah. any management, any any anybody telling you no, you can't say that message. And I think a lot of time in history we had had informational gatekeepers, people who kept the information from getting out. People who are like, No, you can't be you can't be saved. You need to come through us to get saved. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to oh you have to and you have to pay money to do that. And and, I, I, and you know, we, we we've gotten good at that. And one 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 thing I wanted to add to your uh, your question was like also I think information age is one part of it, but I think what we've learned in the Bible is in the golden age, the original 
you know, pre-flood society, you had these realms interacting. You had, you had, you had creatures from the heavenly realms here on earth with us. So the gods and all these other things were roaming and they were building these empires. And I think that all that stuff was true. And I think it's been repackaged in every culture's, you know, sort of their preservation system. Their mythos. Yeah. yeah. But the golden age, you know, the, the dudes who built the pyramids and all the things around the world, I think they were getting this knowledge from non-human sources. And so, yes. so, yeah, yes. So the, the <laughs> day we've been talking about the days of Noah, right. Are realms and knowledge. Yeah. And I think we're getting there again. So is the veil going to be pulled back and we're going to have all this weird stuff hanging out with us again? I think we're, if, 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 if things work in cycles and ages, we're kind of coming to the end of an age and we're coming to a new one. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff's going to start roaming again. It, it it feels, that, that's it, how you know these guys are seasoned podcasters because yeah. you said to answer my question, Dude, I, was, I forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> you asked but 20 you, minutes you ago, finished though. it up and I'm just like, oh yeah, that was my question. Dude. But I, I want to say this for like all of the like, you know, midline conservative thinking evangelicals who might follow the show. Um, C.S. Lewis, who is somebody that most of our audience probably respects, he did an yeah. essay called Religion and Rocketry. Have you guys read this or heard this? It's insane. It's his how theology and the church should view the discovery of extraterrestrials should they exist. Mm. And he does this entire argument. And basically, he said the argument he gets most often is that people will say, well, Jesus came for us to save us. And he said... One, that's arrogant to think we deserve it. So Jesus came because we are depraved. He's like, could it not be that our God created an expansive cosmos with other universes and we are the only ones messed up enough to have fallen? And so he came to us to shepherd us. And that's C.S. Lewis. Yeah. So he's, so, just, he's just giving wow. hypotheticals. It's, so it's, it's hypotheticals, like, but like... Intelligent dude. Yeah. He was just like, I, that's what I love about C.S. Lewis is just like how he came from like uh, the mere Christianity, how we yep. wrote about like... Mm -hmm. basically you can read mere Christianity as an atheist and come out like, cause he argues it, you know, yeah. it's like, and I, I love that about him. I'm just like thinking about the book is so dense, man. Dude, I, dude, I, I listening to the thing, like, reading a page is like a book. Oh dude, you have to like any, I gotta, I don't even like, know what I read. You, I gotta go back and read this again. How do you put yeah. that many words in a sentence. I listened to that <laughs> essay and actually had to pause like every 20 seconds and then like process everything yeah. that he was just said. And I, I mean, I don't think we're even contending necessarily that. I, I, I just think, I think one of the things that, <coughs> that we, that we got pushed into this journey really was, you know, we had Dr. Michael Heiser on in episode 34 and he wrote a book called The Unseen Realm. We lost Mike last year, but he became a friend, a friend of Nate and I as a friend of the show. And he was a biblical scholar, ancient Hebrew, ancient Semitic languages. He was an Old Testament guy. And his whole contention was, is that we, that the Old Testament and the, in the Bible is written to an audience that was culturally not us as Americans. Yeah. And not only that, but living post enlightenment and in, in, in this academic era, uh, you know, where we, we empirically measure everything and we have all this, it's very scientific in this sense. That wasn't the paradigm. In fact, the, the, they lived in a very real supernatural reality. And in some ways in the West, we've divorced these things and, and for, and forgotten that we had actually believe in a very supernatural faith. We have, you know, a, an immaculate conception and a virgin birth and a resurrected Christ. And then you go to the old Testament, there's all kinds of weird stuff. There's, you know, talking donkey and a, you know, if you can go down a million different things, you know, Samuel being raised by the witch of Endor, all these things that glo that, that you can easily, you know, there's a hundred examples, but I think that paradigm in and of itself, understanding that we, we live in this, these worlds that overlap in the sense of this, the heavens and, and the earth that, their space yeah. within these within this context for these things that are that go bump in the night and exist, and even for conversations around extraterrestrials and the UFO phenomena, because listen, like this this stuff isn't doesn't disqualify our faith. It doesn't sit outside of any fences. God God is infinite, and we know so little about the what has been created in the heavenlies outside of our our story, which is the Bible is the story of humanity, right? That these possibilities exist and we, we get into this in our show it's like the angelic race and angels traveling and, and how do we how do we figure that out and i think it would take a lot of these breadcrumbs 
and you connect a lot of dots and say, these are very plausible answers for what people are experiencing. It doesn't need to be little green men from Mars or from an, or from the series system or the Pleiades or it doesn't need to be that it very well. I mean, yeah, you're yeah. not saying it's not that, but you're saying a lot the, of words the, the, that the, I don't know. The, 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 simple, <laughs> the, the simplest answer is usually the, 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 the yes, right answer correct is what they always, say is like yeah. the simplest answer is like, well, it's very plain. We try to well, overcomplicate it. And so, I, 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 it's just as a as a Christian, like it's just it's hard to comprehend that these UFOs are anything but an animal creature, right? That like that like that doesn't exist, and so like, so yeah, that's and, and that's a good that's a good point, right? Yeah. Like that there's a there's a there's very much a physical a physicality. You watch yeah. a lot of sports this is, because we're trying this to make sense of turn, it, right? Yeah, a lot of physicality to it, right? Because yeah. allegedly they crash, and allegedly there's bodies. These are the reports, right? Yeah. This is not just Luke making stuff up. This this is what you can go through. Decades of these stories, releasing of these things crashing and them recovering things, so it, it's not a manifestation, if you will. It would and be impossible to fake all those. Right, reports. and then the whole demon thing is really a broad brush people use in the church. Right, it's just demon. Now, is it demonic? There's probably a lot of this demonic in the sense of being evil. Yeah, sure. But a disembodied spirit, which is the definition of a demon, <coughs> doesn't need to fly a plane or, 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 or advanced aerospace vehicle yeah, you know, yeah. as Tim likes to say doesn't need yeah. to fly that like yeah. doesn't make any sense it's, it's a disembodied spirit doesn't yeah. need to do that we do but get a does... lot of comments about whenever we talk about aliens and UFOs that like it's just demons and it's like <sighs> yeah I'm, for me now I'm just like I I always said that I don't believe in aliens I believe in angels and fallen angels yeah. it's well, just like yeah. and for me I've never but like I never had the concept of it being angels and demons until I met Josh and so to me it's like okay so what's the wh- why isn't it outside the realm of possibility that God created an animal that just became really intelligent or that created well, like that that or, are these aliens or, I, or like that's the thing it's like that's like yeah. it's the or that's the possibility yeah. that's really swarms yeah. all of uni- humanity well Genesis into this, I, I, Genesis I, six is going, I, yeah I, 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 <laughs> I, was like, you Nate, I, I know you want to say something big. <laughs> well I think I think when we brought on Ali you you, you yeah. had a you had a connection with him on our podcast he was trying to say that a lot of Gnostic ideas have swept into the church. That everything is spiritual. Yeah. It doesn't exist. And I think what his whole point was is think about it like Star Wars more. It's all physical. It's all happening here. Mm. You can touch these things. You can experience these things. Angels were were kind of like us. And there are genetics mixed. And it created these giants. And it created a lot of problems, actually. But, you know, they're craft. They're being made somewhere. They're crashing. They're fighting each other. Angels get held up from one point to the next point in the yeah, scripture. Daniel 10, yeah. You know, they they have to move around. Or the angel wrestles with Jacob. Like but that, you, yeah. So it, you kind of can, throw, phys- you yeah, can throw the ethereal thing out, right? Because you go like, you don't get a hip injury from wrestling with the spirit. It, no, it's a physicality. And, spirit, a, and, yeah, and they walk into Sodom, or they, but, right? And but they, they have like kind of like a like a Peter Pan view of, of, of heaven. It's like this imaginary place. It's yeah. out there somewhere. Well, it's easier but to we're really just comprehend. living life here. But really, I think, yeah, like the better way to look at it is everything we do here echoes that kingdom. Mm. That's why we do have kings and queens and we and for forever. Where do we get these concepts from? How do we do everything we do? Well, if you if you listen, you know, listen to the Book of Enoch or read the Book of Enoch, it's 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 a lot of information that was given to humans, and that's how we sort of learned how to corrupt ourselves. Um, we didn't just make this stuff up. We we weren't that creative. We think we are. <laughs> yeah. But um, but it's it's more like imagine, you know, you could get on a boat and sail to heaven right now, and it would be a lot like this. Yeah. It's just not here. It's just there, and we're here. But there's not a lot of difference. And it, it's it, so hard to comprehend. It yeah. Is. It is. It's I have a question. So difficult. What do you guys think the uh, the gray aliens are? Because that's oh, that's a good question. What do you mean, great aliens? <laughs> like the 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 typical like the the, the greys. Gray, so the gray. like the oh, big the head. gray. I think you yeah. said great. What do you the think? What are the great aliens like? Well, they're they're really over. Oh, they're better than the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> they climb mountains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what they do. I, I mean, uh, the greys. So that's a that's a good question. So. Because that definitely started like, with with uh, well, Roswell, right? Yeah. Well, no, like, I, that was, I, like, I was the greys like, are page. usually like the short, skinny. Your typical alien that you I mean, because the typical alien big eyes ad- abduction guy. involves oh, that yeah. species. Yeah. And it's hard for me to imagine those being fallen angels. 
you know, because it's just like yeah. we talks about fall or angels in general are they they look like men. Yeah. And so I guess that's it where could I get be a little some kind of I mean that like I said earlier, we have two kingdoms, right? You have the kingdom of heaven and you have a hierarchy of creatures that God is, you know, in control of and is part of God's family. Um and then you have the kingdom of darkness and we know that they've they 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 pervert a lot of things and they corrupt yeah. a lot of things. So you know, we talked about a lot of the alternate history in our show that they've corrupted all kinds of animals. And I think that was the biggest part of the flood story that I wasn't told and most Christians weren't told is that it's kind of like genetic lottery happening and they were just making, they were inventing ways to sin. Like, let's take this thing and put it on this thing. Let's just F this thing up as much as we can down here. Yeah, I have an idea. Like hamsters. Yeah. <laughs> hamsters. Exactly. Those can't be made from God. They're weird. Oh, and toddlers. Right? No, it's like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the platypus. Yeah, the platypus. Uh, yeah, is yeah. it a duck? duck? We don't know. We is a beaver? We, who, who, no one has any idea. <laughs> but so so to answer the great question. So we know, you know, that Satan and his kingdom of darkness is just good at screwing things up. So I'm sure they can come up with ways to take this, take that, yeah. and create this thing that could it sounds like the grays from the people we've interviewed, and all we can go off of is what we've heard on our show. They sort of carry out a task. They show up to do something. They're not evil in the sense that they don't frighten people half to death. They're yeah. not scary. They don't say things. They're very calm. They're kind of cold to the touch. They're kind of like little machines. A little worker Could bees. Could you say yeah. that, like, but d- again, we're, doing, we're, we're making the, a bigger spider web here. Right. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of things. it's just what we do. But do you think that this is going to get crazy? <laughs> do you think that AI... Is this in this artificial intelligence? Is this because in the book of Enoch it talks about the fallen angels presenting knowledge to man? Right. Could it be that of AI could, being? Could this, they use this, that as the instrument to manipulate humanity and or create this? We sound like psychos. I don't. No, care. no. we're asking questions. I know, but I'm you're like, good. you're good. But I believe these yeah, questions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> could these? Fallen angels create machinery because using AI, using and using AI like an artificial intelligence to where cold to the touch they don't have souls they're they're right. just empty vessels empty vessels I don't know those are I mean those are good those are good <laughs> see listen all we can do is really have, I, I love this right because what we try to do on our show is we have, try to have conversations around a lot of questions don't have you know a real answer at this point unless we we get one and we dissect it or we get a sh- we get a craft and we get to touch it. But the best we can try to do is is, is postulate like through our through our biblical worldview, right? And try to and, and I think this discourse is so important. Like, yeah, you want to talk about these things because the reality is, and I've said this on the show a lot of times, but if we don't have these discussions as Christians and, and try to point this back to the Scripture, then there the world outside of Christianity, the world, if you will, is more than happy to dis- dis- disciple I can't even talk, disciple you and our kids and everyone else in their worldview and their worldview is not is going to be the antithesis of the bible it's going to be yeah. the antithesis of christianity they're going to tell you what they want you to believe yeah and so i i think having conversations and discourse around this and not just putting our heads in the sand and not just like glossing over this verse because it's weird but trying to trying to understand it within the context of our faith is so important and so when you talk about grays it's like i don't know that we know the answer but as Nate said, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of encounters. There's 30 years, 40, 50 years of ufology, right? People, their anecdotal stories and encounters you can look at and go, there's something going on here. They're physical. You, you people have touched them, right? Totally. And there's something weird. And going back to what you said in the beginning, right? Angels are more like us in a lot of ways, right? But I, I think what I said before was like they're. There's just there's, there's a, a plethora, of right, yeah, of, yeah. of perhaps of creation, and then what Nate said, we know from Genesis six that it says all flesh was corrupted, and so something we talk about in our show are like the cryptids, right? You have these things that are part human and part animal, right? It was this it was this mixing, it was defilement of creation and DNA. So if that's happening in Gen six, you know, thousands of years ago, uh, and then you look at the UFO abduction phenomena where they're taking DNA, yeah, you know, the, God is the one that can create. Mm-hmm. Right, but what but what people can do and humans do, and we would believe fallen angels and, and the darkness do is to manipulate, right? And so taking these things and manipulating, so it's probably not a far fetch to say that this well, could be some sort of genetic creation or 
or manipulation by the not creation, but a manipulation by the by the darkness, or perhaps it's some somehow some one of these other super. Or could you say that fallen angels are just fallen angels that turned to emo? There you go. <laughs> just like honestly, Dude. yeah. I don't want to get out in the sun. Yeah. Start listening to Creed. Hey, cold to the touch. Yeah. No, so is Scott Stapp a just gray? Go stand out in the sun. For it's a not emo. Guys. That isn't well, emo. I, I, I think the black Scott parade, Stapp was kind of like he's <laughs> a, he's like parade. a rock emo. He's like a. I don't think you can put any emo anywhere. Yeah, no, that that's emotional. Scott. Dude, just, he it's, was, it's just, he was, with arms coming out, I'm sending me from the edge, and I'm thinking. He's thinking about the, death. Yeah, he's right there. That's hey, very emo. That's rock emo, dude. It, the best part anyway. is we know all the songs. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, 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 you know all all now. <laughs> dude, so good. So I, I, think, I think a part of this, too, is you have, you have their technology and you have our technology. A lot of times, the goals are the same. I think they had technology to communicate to each other. A lot of these cryptid creatures can just talk directly to you telepathically. Well, that's what you see but with we all need the phones. Abductions. Yeah. But we need phones. And it took us forever to get to that point. Yeah. They Whereas, have- like, did they have that from the get-go? Is that why we saw UFOs 100 years from now? Like, I mean, like, in the past. Yeah. Like, it was like, it was like everything was exactly the same for them. We well, don't they, see technological advances yeah, yeah, happening yeah. for them and compared to us. Well, so I, maybe they maybe they are advancing their their technology. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way: I mean, we have Ford cars and we get to drive our trucks, and they have their Ford cars and they drive the trucks. They have their heaven wheat bread that they yeah. eat. We do too. So it's you see these sim, you see these these stories where it's like, man, our realms are very similar, are overlapping, and the realms kind of touch each other sometimes. But the technology is is there, and I think what they're they're making these things somewhere, and they're coming here, and that's really hard for a lot of Christians. And I think that, you know, part of our podcast is just putting these things in practical terms, so you can understand them. So like when this stuff does shows up, it's not all spiritual woo woo. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of Christians think that it's just all deception. I'm like, so, yeah. so dude, do you think Tolkien? Was why would it this? Like, that's what he was writing about with, like, the elves and uh, orcs. He's probably lifting straight from, like, weird histories of of people. I think he was just ancient. Just a nerd. Well, the little people (laughs) exist. Just a nerd, maybe? A hobbit. A hobbit. Well, he, I mean, he was. I mean, he, a silly language. There's a ton of, like, biblical context to right. it. Right. Oh, yeah. They were believers, but I, I think he was recreating this sort of depiction of, of, of what. I think you the know, golden age was like that. Uh, yeah, uh, of that, right? You have yeah. the you have the darkness that's creating these orcs, right? Which are, the, which are these dude, hybrid mixing yeah, yeah. the angel like creatures Correct, with right? creatures. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. If the golden age, I, I like this guy. That's that's a good. You guys just started joking, and he was like, "Let's let's roll with this." No, this, that's, this that's, 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 that's all. That's my were, defense I mean, token mechanism. Was, and we've we said on the show a lot of times that uh, that perhaps our reality is a lot more like Lord of the Rings than than Absolutely. we imagine. And Star Wars too. And star, but this is this is happening. And, and listen, like I, I think what we try to do too is like we we aren't creating, we're not saying we have the answers. We're not we're not creating some like new theology or anything like that at all. And in, in fact, we're trying to bring experts on our show to talk about their research. Um, and, and we we remind people that like it's best to, you know, chew the meat, spit out the bones, right? Because these are a lot of unanswerable things. Yeah. And when we try to contextualize it within within our faith, yeah, you know we're. You know, do it, do it with a, with a, with a grain of salt, but also like the things are ramping up so quickly. Like we, I don't think when Nate and I started this podcast in 2020, we could have imagined that in 2023 we would have the UFO disclosure. I mean, we, mainstream media talking for months, and now it's they're onto wars, of course, but months about about this this topic, and maybe the craziest thing is it hardly seem to blip on, yeah, on the consciousness cares. of uh, of the country, right? Yeah. They much rather fight with each other about other things, but this is happening. And it's going to become a point where we aren't able to ignore the realities of, of whatever whatever this ends up ultimately being. But I, I think our contention is, man, you can find this stuff, answers to this stuff, um, concepts and, and, and ways to postulize what is going on Within our faith and within history, like you look at you, just the things that happen in the Bible, and I'm, and I'm, I'm I think all these things are within the realm of, of reality. And I don't think it's like. Also, I, w- I want to say this: I don't think we're just trying to stuff something into a Christian can, and yeah, trying to yeah. make it fit. Either. Well, that's what I mean. We've had I've had someone comment that before of like, 
well, yeah, if, if you believe in something so big that you can put it into one thing, like you can make everything connect if you want to. Right. And that's just that just got me thinking. I was talking to Andrew about it today. It's just like of having that discerning spirit, you know, of just being like, um, j- I mean, just be, yeah, discerning of just like, okay, yeah, that's actually a good point. You yeah. could take anything and everything. You could take something that is not real. Like someone could make up something and be like, oh, well, that fits into this narrative. Right. right. You know? But, um, I think that is very important to be very, I don't know, understanding. I lost my train of thought. No, but John, <laughs> John, John, John says a test of spirits, right? Like, and yeah, I, yeah. I think it's important that we, man, with everything in our lives, we use discernment. Like, that's paramount. But I, I think, too, when we're, we're attempting to, to answer these, some of these questions that seem unanswerable and, and trying to take some of this phenomenon and say, how does this fit with the way I view the world? I don't think I, I would say I don't think we're stretching. If that makes sense, I, I think it's. Yeah. I, I think the problem with our our paradigms is is that we are, you know, we're 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 living in here in the twenty first century as as Westerners, and a lot of this context exists you know, written to ancient Hebrews, and and we got to put ourselves into that paradigm. When you do, and realize, man, like we have a supernatural faith, and we have a faith that talks about a lot of these things that exist outside of this realm of in earth that we talk about. And then I think, man, this, this can all, there are a lot of dots here we connect not in the crazy way, like that meme with, uh, Charlie from, uh, it's, it's always sunny <laughs> it's where he's you. like, oh, yeah. but I feel like that I sometimes, right? I mean, you, yeah. you, you're like, you're trying to, you want to, you want to connect these things just even personally. So you can say, how do I, you know, how am I, how am I to best think about these things? And, and we have to also be okay with understanding we sometimes will never have the answer. A hundred percent. We a hundred percent will not have that's super all biblical. of the connections. Well, and, I mean, we have to, and we have to be content with that. And that's the difficult... But but we, we, might, we might be wrong. But the problem is, is yeah. Yeah. I think a lot, of, a lot of us have come up with bad answers to these complicated questions. Andy hasn't. They're all solid. <laughs> really good answers. No, I mean, I don't want to speak up unless I have the You know, like, like growing up and hearing about the flood. You know, the flood yeah. was just because, you know, you were just playing with yourself too much. You know, and things like that, and that's that's why the God flooded the world. It's a weird analogy. We were all we were all weird just, place to go. We were yeah. all just lusting so much, and we were all just doing. Bad. Yeah. But it's like no, no, no. The world, human beings, almost were bred out of yeah. existence. Yeah. You know what I mean? We we were told it was it was just you were so sinful, and so God had to wipe it all out. And it's like, I mean, human beings were on the verge of extinction when you look at when you look at it from this like 4D view, mm-hmm. and then you start to be able to answer all these complicated questions that you had growing up. Because the questions are there no matter what, as a Christian. I've debated with guys all throughout college and in the band days, backstage with a lot of dudes who just like didn't understand why we were a Christian band. Like, how can you believe in God because of this, 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 and this? Yeah. And they have no answers for these. And, and a lot of guys are like, I don't know. I, I just do, I guess. You know, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. And but some, But a lot of people do have problems with these major questions. What the heck was going on at the Tower of Babel? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah. God just blows up the town. What happened there? Yeah, you know. And there's these really like highlighted parts of the Bible that no one knows how to make any sense of. So you, someone comes up to you, someone know, seen an UFO, seen an alien, has these dispar- I mean, these ideas that are so outside the Christian perspective that don't have a Christian perspective at all, and are coming to you and saying, "How do you make sense of that? How do you? How do you?" How do you explain that to them in a short pitch of just like saying, like I'm confused? How do you explain it to me? It's difficult. I think I think guys like Tim Alberino have come on our show and said it very very simply. It's not, you know, it's not this emotional thing that oftentimes is being presented to you in a church setting. I was doing drugs for fifty years and I yeah. had prostitutes and all this stuff, and then I came back to Jesus, you know, and that happens, and people's lives are transformed, and they stop participating in in low you know a lower lifestyle um and they start to, to desire a different way of living and that is what a lot of people think the gospel is but he would say you know the gospel is you were a part of the family of god you were part of the royalty and you were tricked and swindled and you and we sinned and we we became in a lower state we were you know creatures that were designed to be immortal and live in this paradise yeah and then we kind of chose to leave our family and live in the pig slop we ruined it. The prodigal yeah. Son. Yeah. yeah and then you know the the gospel is that you needed to be back in the family so christ comes and gives you his blood so you can come back to the family of god 
again. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is very much like an act of uh, sacrifice to reclaim us. So I don't know exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden because there is a lot of like reality happening, but it's packaged in stories that sound like, did that really happen? Or I'm not sure exactly yeah. how much of it was reality versus how much of it was a practical, like that, that's, that's historical accurate retelling of this story. But what does happen is we seem to be, there's some sort of genetic change. The sin of Adam spread to every human. Yeah. So we, we biologically changed and we needed someone. And it was the son of God who came down and reclaims us and gives us back to the family so we can be back in the family again. And totally that, that that's the gospel in a very practical meaning. And sometimes, you know, you need to explain things to people in a very much like, you know, you were, you're kind of wandering around clueless and we're, but we're all kind of made in the image of God too. So we're, we, we feel like we're lost often. Yeah. We feel like something's not right. We feel, so we try all these things in this world to, to kind of fill that void. So there is this like social gospel that kind of continues, but the raw reality is it's, it does sound more like a Marvel movie. <laughs> it totally yeah, does. yeah, and I'm lost. <laughs> well, just like a Marvel movie. <laughs> you were talking about yeah. the halfway um, in between. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. I don't get this. Yeah. You're talking about the uh, Sunny in Philadelphia, the uh, meme or whatever. I was listening to episode 199 with uh, Ali. Yeah, Ali. Yeah. And then I watched this documentary, and I came home, and my mom was babysitting <laughs> our girls. I'm like, Mom, listen to this. And I just started like, I was like fourth dimension, all this stuff. She's like. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. That's very good. Job. I'm like, I know I sound crazy. <laughs> I know I do. And I was literally doing the hands. <laughs> Looking back, I'm like, oh, man. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not crazy. I could have presented <laughs> that way different. Um, but no, sit down. Andy, Andy, to your, to your point, too, though, I think what's interesting about this journey for Nate and I, because it really is a journey podcast. We start with Bigfoot, right? And then we, yeah. we really not, sometimes you don't feel like you're driving. Like it, it feels like you're. You're on the story arc that is continuing, and it continues to line up, which is really a crazy sort of yeah. You thing look back to experience. like, later, like, like I don't how know how we, we, we got here though, right? Yeah. And what I think is fascinating is that um, we get a few emails every week from people that that have, that had an experience, and, then, and we start to realize these things are not so uncommon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, able to have the uh, we what we'd probably classify as like a paranormal experience, like something that isn't out of the ordinary, right? And a lot of these people think that have come to the conclusion that they that wasn't compatible with Christianity or their faith and, or disqualified them or disqualified their faith. And, and, and I think at the end of the day, we're just trying to say it doesn't disqualify your faith. In fact, like here's how you can contextualize it. And I, that's been the really the cra part of the crazy part of this journey for us is, is, is maybe understanding how you feel like it, these things are so isolated and these things happen are, are very rare occurrences. And, and you know, we pick Bigfoot to talk about because it's the most, you know, encountered creature. It, it happens thousands and thousands of times. He's scary, year, dude. Right, right. But, <laughs> but people are having things all the time. And, Sometimes. And, and, and bec maybe because of, of this Western paradigm we live in that people don't know how to how to categorize or where to put that. And that's been part of the cool part is like, only been our own journey is kind of an, uh, opening this space that says like, man, like God is so big. And we live in this enormous reality that i don't think we even realize and, and i think ancient people all believed in all of the stuff we're talking about yeah i think they believed in their kingdom was the right one their god was the right one and they, they were all at war with each other there was no like we don't believe in anything yeah, yeah. we're just floating through life what's now care. you go to sub-saharan africa and you get sick you go see the witch doctor right because yeah. the witch doctor interacts with the spirits and these things and they and, they, and it and there's and there's some power there yeah Right, and, and so I think that this a supernatural paradigm exists now in tons of places on Earth. Here, just Always really has. doesn't exist very to a large extent, or, or to a very exists to a very small extent in the West, right? Because you know the stories of the missionaries are my favorite. Where you know the, there's we were we recounted these stories about um, we don't want you to to tell us about your God here because we serve this God and this God's powerful and heard the story a number of times, but it, it always somewhat goes to something like this. Someone gets sick, goes to the witch doctor. It doesn't, it doesn't heal the person and they get on the phone or they send somebody out. Maybe not on the phone cause it's the jungle. They call somebody, they send somebody out and say, Hey, can your, can your God fix this? And the missionary goes up and the person gets healed. And guess what? The entire village does. 
They say, oh, your God is more powerful than the God we serve. We want to serve your God. Mm. And that doesn't re- that paradigm doesn't really exist so much in the West because all these people are already believing all these things happen. There are spirits and, and we serve this God and you serve a God and your God, can your God do this? And, and that I, I think is much more as Nate would say, like what, what the ancients and how the ancients believe there wasn't this, like there wasn't a bunch of people being like, you know, nihilists, like uh, the big Lebowski, we believe in nothing, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think that was really a thing. I think yeah. you, you, everyone served their God. Right. And, and yeah. then, you know, Yahweh is the king of kings. He's dominion over all of these lower, you know, Elohim is the Hebrew in the Bible, which is this, the same word we the Greek use for angels. So you yeah. have these angels that are given, you know, dominion. And we're not going to do a whole theological lesson here, but then De- Deuteronomy 32, all the nations get an Elohim that governs. They all rebel against Yahweh. And then, you know, he takes into Israel unto himself. But these are entities that then became, you know, the, the lower G gods of the Old Testament. They weren't. People weren't worshiping rocks and stones and trees because they didn't get anything from it. There's a real, there was yeah, a power yeah. there because it was a real thing. And I think sometimes we get separated and thinking like, oh, idolatry, you should have no other gods before me. That just means like I shouldn't really love football more than I love going to church, right? And those kind of things. But the context of the Old Testament was like, no, they were serving real entities that were behind. Yeah, they were getting something out well, of that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Your like people don't the, do that unless you're, there's some transaction there happening. There has right? to be something that they're getting out of it. And so how do we... For people who do not believe anything in the Bible, anything right. God, how do we justify? How do you communicate to them that, like, how do you give them an explanation for aliens, an explanation for anything supernatural who doesn't believe in anything spiritual? How do you justify that to them? And that's, I mean, that's really kind of, I think, what we do on the show. You know, it's like it, it requires a lot of dedicating your. You know, Being open minded, obviously. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, we start. That's why we start small. You yeah. start with something that that that's not not small in the, in the Sasquatch, but he's not a small being. But I'm just saying, you start with this thing that's a like, small concept. Yes, yeah. and then yeah. you kind of work your way towards the bigger concepts. And if you follow our line of sh- you know, like where we went, we started with this creature, then we kind of work back in alternate history. There is this alternate history that we all kind of know about. You know, people look at the pyramids and they're like, okay. 20 million blocks each blocks two tons yeah this thing's perfect and it took them it would take them 20 years to build if they put one block down every five minutes how did they build this thing it doesn't make any sense why did they build it and oh it's astronomically aligned oh this thing resonates yeah this thing's got frequency wait a minute there's this technology here and there's a lot of people who are going to ancient aliens and they're going to these UFO religions. They're going to spiritual stuff. Yeah. They're going to Burning Man. They're getting spiritual, whatever. What, what, what's your I, I answer just, for I, I just think be, it's be, cool with all that stuff of just like explaining it. I think God has definitely set out uh, like very logical explanations. And that's why I love people like Graham Hancock and stuff who I don't, he's not a Christian. No, right? no. He, yeah. he gets all the way to the end and then he that's can't, what I'm saying, he can't but, cross but that he's, last. He's, he's going window. down this path of like what you've always been taught with history and like the way things are. That could not be the answer. You know, right. like there's, <laughs> there's different explanations for this stuff. I'm like, you can take that. And I'm like, he, God's definitely laying out the foundation of like, just different, I don't know, evidence, right. you know? I, I'm, I guess I'm trying to say is not believing in anything spiritual is kind of a luxury. Sure. It's not It's not how it's been historically. It's not how it's going to be. And the, we know in the end it's going to be a, 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 a one-world religion. I think so. And I think everything's moving towards that. The sheep are being corralled. And having we, this, like, I don't believe in anything is a luxury. So you can you can be there right now, but this stuff's going to start showing up and it's manifesting and it's coming and, and and we've been so conditioned in this paradigm for so long that we evolved over billions of years and nothing's spiritual and everything's just ones and zeros, and it's not it's not it's kind of a just a luxury time in life to to, to believe that. I what think. is that? What does that world one world system government look like to you? Like what is that? You're getting into Revelation. Like, no, you're good. Like, no, like, <laughs> yeah. like, like we're going there. quickly. How would how would you do? How does that look like? Well, I was just control and domination. I think Satan offers codependency. You always need 
It's a needy system, and I think God offers independence and freedom. Do you think human so, beings would go for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, we already have. I mean, look at the last few years. Get in line. Shut your business down. Taxes. Don't say anything. Well, I'm saying Americans, alone, yeah. like, they obviously fall in line with I the mean, U.S. Should, government, but to follow a full world government, how would that look like? Morally. Oh, Reagan. Morally. You will be morally tricked into it because it's it, it's a kingdom. They both have their moralities. It's a twisted gospel versus the real gospel. So basically, if, well, what if was, you're not gonna, for this, then you're against this. Kind of like that. You kind hate of thing. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hate people. You said Reagan. You don't love yeah. people. Do you remember his quote? Yeah, from UN. Yeah, I, I think this quote. I think this is. The, I think if you're going to hypo, uh, have a hypothesis of how this happens, right? Because one world is. It, it seems like an impossibility. What we have going on in the Middle East right now. Somehow you have to have. Arabs and and Jews get along, and Chechens and Russians, and Sunni and Shia Muslims, Americans and Canadians. That's a yeah. They just stop apologizing, right? I mean, but Floridians <laughs> and the rest of the states, right? Florida man, <laughs> Florida man, and Tennessee man. Yeah, Florida man. I, I Reagan said it in eighty early eighty seven. I want I might have the wrong date, but it's eighties. He was at the UN and said basically, perhaps what we need to and I'm gonna paraphrase this to unite the world would be something. Exist, an existential crisis, maybe something on par uh, on the measure of an alien invasion, and this is and this is the movies, right? This is like yeah. Independence Day and everything else. But when you start to think about this, and and you go the way that things have been, we've been conditioned really in media and everything else that's been going on since the fifties and forties, fifties, really, you start to see that you can pull some of these threads, and you go, perhaps this is this is what it is because. I think we that we as a humanity we lay down our swords if it comes to our own extinction. I think we lay down those 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 ancient wars with each other because it's there's there's something that's threatening the annihilation of us all. Yeah. Right, and, and I I do believe there's a very good argument to say that somehow what we see in the end of days, and if you're Christians, you look at the Book of Revelation. You know, how does this how does the world go to war right with uh, with God essentially, and 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 there's been some very good guests on our show that have poth- uh, have postulated that this is is the is an alien invasion. There'll be this. You can, if you hear it, you can, if you listen for it, you hear it. There is a narrative out there. It's not an ancient aliens narrative, but there's this narrative, and people will repeat this. People all over the map will repeat this and say the aliens are already here, and they've been here, and they're they're going to step in to make sure we don't destroy ourselves, right? So there's this idea of this benevolent, like they showed up when we did the first, right? It's sort of the ancient alien like, thing yeah. too, but it's like this: they're they're here already, right? And and, and they're here to help us, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so from so, all of our social problems, yeah, right. <laughs> they care a lot about that. Yeah, so we're gonna solve all of our issues: global warming, gender. <laughs> Right, right. They so, care all about this, guys. So yeah. I, I think that there's there's a pretty there's a pretty good scenario you can create and and and, and hypothesize where there then's this the impending alien invasion by the hostile aliens, right? So the good aliens come. It sounds so crazy to even say it out loud, but this is kind of. I was of, literally talking oh. about this with my mom. Right. So <laughs> they, so they they come and they and they they basically unite us and and then help save us from this and from this impending doom, right? And. And it's something that's repeated itself in history, right? It's like a Tower of Babel moment. Yes. Where everyone can speak the same language, and we all have to use a common enemy, and we need to unite to defeat the God of the Bible. And so I think what Satan's going to sell people on is like, you want your own, you want to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. F God. We don't need God, and we can we don't just, need these we people can, who are listening to him. We can we can yeah. fight well, against you, him. You yeah, can think yeah, about yeah. The, like it, the, it, the world coming together, like uh, a a. Example would be like when the uh, I don't know if you can say it without getting flagged, but the the Rona, when the Rona broke out yeah. in 2020, you know, like everyone in the world reacted to that, you know, like whether whatever I don't we, want to get into no, all we, that, we, but we like took, we took their you, word you, for it. You and we saw like everybody a, fell in line. Yeah. yeah, everybody fell in line. Well, everyone didn't want to go home for Christmas because they didn't want to kill their grandma. Yeah, no, and, and, and it, it was it, a moral thing. It comes you down because do it. it becomes a trust thing. It's like oh, they have their. We have they have our best interest in mind. But think of that on a like an intergalactic level. Yeah. You know? Like, like, like yeah, a spiritual level. Like, like everyone just like, be like, huh! Yeah. You know? Yeah. Almost as if like God God, God, God comes out of the heavens <laughs> and Satan comes out of the heavens and they're both like talking to you and you have you're like this whole reality opens up and you're like you you clearly have to pick a side. You know what I mean? It's like if you you just lived in the woods for I feel like Human humanity is right now. It's like we're all been kind of living in the woods for the last thousand years, and then we're gonna come back to a city and we're gonna be like, "Oh my, what is going on?" And I think there's just been this whole 
sort of unseen realm around us for so long. Yeah. And I think and, a lot and, of people are going to wake up to it. And, choo- oh and choose the right decision or you die. Like the, that's the type of thing where it's like it's going to the point yeah, where someone's like, going to have to make this. Yeah, yeah you're going to make these yeah. decisions. Yeah, make the decision. You make the wrong one. You're done. Your yeah. life is done. Unfortunately, well, like it's, like, it's yeah. so scary, dude. Uh, and was, I mean, the, end, the book of Revelation talks about this great delusion and this great deception that happens, and it's I mean, it, if that's, I'm sure this yeah. could happen. A lot of you know, there's other scenarios where this could happen, but this seems like pretty plausible based upon social conditioning we're seeing, whether in media, out of Hollywood, out of what's happening with mass media now picking picking a lot of this stuff up. I think some of it's legit, <coughs> like in the sense of like there are real whistleblowers talking about real stuff happening, but. I think the lid's starting to come off, and perhaps we're totally. in a timeline where this lid does come off, and this is the next step in the scenario where now we have an existential crisis for humanity. And I, for me personally, this is just, this is all my opinion, right? But I, I, it's hard for me to figure out how else this happens. Like, how do you get all these people that really hate each other and hate each other for th- millennia? Will say, hey, let's you know, let's be pals, let's, let's, be, let's be bros, and let's fight, yeah. let's fight off these these, and these bad guys, right? Just repeating themes. There's all these yeah. themes. So there were hybrids in the golden age. Going to be hybrids probably then. Common enemy, fighting wars. I think you all know of it. you you kind of just see the themes kind of coming back. So I think you can kind of think, okay, it's going to be everyone's together. Everyone has a common goal. They have to unite. We have to go to war over something, and we can all put ourselves in the hive mind so we can come together. So I think. If you were going to wage a war against God, you would need everything you possibly could aimed at him. Mm-hmm. Every human, hybrid, weapon, whatever. And I think that's kind of what Satan's going to try to play in. I think the Armageddon is something that's going to happen. I, I, a kinetic I, war with God. I, I think it's bonkers that people just believe that like we're just existing. They're like that there's not something at it's not work. A purpose. Even even if yeah. like, even if you truly believe that there's no God whatever and you're just living your own life, the fact that you don't think your government is a business right. and they don't they're not working whatever they do to stay in control to be number one, they don't care about you at all. No, you're, and so it's it's just one of those things where it's like you have to make those decisions for yourself. You have to start I don't know, like it's just you have to be aware. If we weren't on a list before, we are not. So. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but I, listen to me. The, the, number one, baby. The, the three I'll be number one. You know, the last three years I think it have been a massive red pill for a lot of people that didn't yeah. Didn't didn't see the shell game really right? It's if you didn't wake up in 2020, I, I think there's probably not a lot of hope that you do, um, because I think there's a lot of exposure I- into what was going on and to what intentions were. I, I think even before that, a lot of a lot of folks, probably me included, were just like, oh yeah, of course these people in power have the best intentions for us, right? Yeah. They're they're mostly good people. There's always bad apples, and mostly good people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but I I think. You know, I, listen. We are, and they said we're in a world of war. Like this is this is an ancient war that we're we're part of that had never that is, isn't ended yet. God's written the end. We know how it ends. But we're somewhere in the middle of this thing, maybe middle end, depending on what your eschatology is, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but well, I guess that's why I wanted to like lead to ultimately because there's probably a lot of people listening or watching that are like. Completely freaked out right now, <laughs> and also like, sorry like, about that. I mean, yeah. What okay, are we talking okay. about? Yeah, yeah, like, to go back to why your Lord, you guys of... talking about farting and wait, stuff. Wait, wait, go wait, back to that. Why, why yeah, am this... I not laughing right now? <laughs> to go back to your Lord of the Rings, you know, kind of remember the point when the rings and some things that shouldn't have been forgotten were lost. Yeah, and I think that's kind of where we've been the last. That's a years. great line because, like, there's this ancient war, and then there's this time where things were kind of calm, but the evil was still kind of in the background resonating and uh, now I think it's kind of coming back so these things are coming out of wherever I mean we're getting phone calls last night with Tim Alberino with some crazy stuff happening in the Peru jungle we're about to do an episode on that things about the that, face peelers yes dude. Yeah. directly about the face peelers I know you've talked about it before but like it's just dude it's wild what's happening that was our introduction to you guys was talking <laughs> about the face peelers dude, okay <laughs> yeah so he's coming on talking about the girl the whole story of her them trying to take her face, and we're gonna he's gonna and drop that, dude. That's wild. and then everybody like so they she tells information about that whole yeah, ordeal. He, went, he just went to the village where it happened Bro. and talked to him. Ooh. That and a bunch of other people that had encounters with with these, these things. weird things. See, all this stuff sounds so far fetched, and thinking one day we'll get there sounds like this thing that churches can't accept. But like you go back to Pharaoh. 
and like Moses is literally battling magic yeah, with yeah. the magicians. Yeah. They're led through the desert by a pillar of fire. It's like this stuff happened biblically. Not yeah. only that, but like the Yahweh pronounced judgment upon the gods of Israel. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. In which, by nature of the text, recognizes there was a real entity there that, 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 only them, that yeah. but had power and gave power to the priests and magicians in order to, to they could do a few things. Yep. Not what our God, the King of Kings, right. yeah. Lord of Lords, can do, but there's some power there, right? And, and I think that. You're right. Like we, we sometimes we, we kind of turns into a coloring book and say, "Oh yeah, we yeah, did this, this, this." We'll skip over the angel of death, um, and we'll, we'll get to the end, and the people get out and then cross the Red Sea and all this. And you go, "Man, there was like, dude, there was things that were happening that were, I mean, very, very, if you will, supernatural." A lot of people, a lot of some guests on our show don't like that term, um, and, and that's maybe you had a question earlier, and I was going to say, I think the one thing if someone approaches you and believes in nothing. Uh, about any of this, I, I think as Nate said, you got to start small, but I think you also got to kind of break down semantics, right? Because I, I think you can look at the biblical text and talk about angels wrestling, angels walking, the physicality of that. And so, if you've had, if you're having trouble with this all being ethereal and spiritual, I can't buy into that because you can go. Let's point out the physicality of, of how this exists in in, in the scripture, um, in, in in these stories, and then I think you can draw very straight linear lines to some of the things that are happening today that are, we we would think they're unexplainable or or are are being disclosed and say you know perhaps they're th- this is this is the best explanation yeah. and it is for us yeah um and again i don't want to get and josh you said i i don't ever want to feel like and i don't think nate and i do this but i don't ever want to feel like what we're doing is trying again to take all these things and stuff them into a christian box and say well this is how we make it make sense um i think it's quite the opposite i think we are put everything on the table mm-hmm. and say because hey, really we, to our own audience the evangelical christians of america we sound psycho, you know. So <laughs> Dude, it's like my Bible we're college. not we're not even. It's yeah. their Christian box is not our Christian box. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's like yeah. for me, it's just like I love hearing from like the sec- secular view. You know, like uh, like interviews with like Native Americans stuff that don't believe in Christ and like right. them literally describing giants and like the star people coming down. Right. It's just like that literally correlates yes. with all this stuff. And it's not like we're forcing it. It's like. Yeah, I no, already have just, this information well, every, that I've read from this I literary mean, source, and now it's like something completely different. It's lining up completely. Like, yeah. how awesome is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the stories the same. All the cultural histories are the same. It all Most, these, uh, they all talk about the flood. Yeah, they all talk about these entities showing up. They all have. It's just who do they put on top? Yeah, and that's really the debate that's been raging on since the beginning of time is who's on top of all of this, who runs the show. Yeah. Have you and guys have you guys ever seen the where Moses parts the Red Sea, the name of the mountain across or like it's like an island mountain. It's across the body of water. It's named after the god of thunder. And so like in in their original language, literally God leads Moses to a place in the wilderness and he's like I am jealous of the attention their god their thing is getting. So I'm going to take you all to his throne and I'm going to show whose power reigns supreme. It's like Jesus going to, to Caesar of Philippi and saying the gates of hell, real place to the base of Mount Hermon, real place. So according to, you know, to the Genesis six epic, this is where the watchers, watchers arrived and saying on this rock, it's not Peter. It's on this rock. It's like a cave to the underworld. He's like, this place is mine. Wow. Mine. I have dominion here. Yeah. The temple of Pan was supposedly built there. And it's literally the back of it is like this cave that goes down into the underworld. And they also had a temple to Zeus there, which had the title of Satan. Yeah. Which is what it's called, which is now in the British Museum. And that's where Jesus was saying, no, this is my place. Yeah. This is mine. I'm going to build my church right here. At the British the Museum. The gates of hell. And I think that, those kind of, con- Tom kind of context. This. I think that's the kind of context. Big that, convicting, that, ain't it? <laughs> I, I just, I like the context, right? Because I, I think in all these conversations, right, I, I, I think we they're get so, heavy. Well, they're so important, I think, to, to understand the world around us and the things that are happening. Um, especially as Christians, but I, I, don't, I don't ever want these these things never trump the gospel, and that's the reality. Well, that's that's why I wanted to get to before we wrap up because we're going to continue this conversation on our half episode on Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash ninjas or butterflies. So go, we're going to continue this conversation, but I just like to to wrap this up because we're all in this mindset. I know this. Of like we get stoked on these conversations. We're yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But for people like my wife <laughs> and my mom, they're just like, it's so it's so heavy, you know? Like No, that's just, that's for like, me too, was like 
I don't know what to do with this information. How do I apply this to my life? How do I feel happy after this? So <laughs> continue with what you were saying, because I feel like that's the bridge of like lifting this heaviness. Well, this is where, where we try to take people and be like, these conversations are, I think we believe, paramount for Christians and for the church, and the, you know, broad brush church to have. Because these these things are happening to people. As I said, these, these people are having experiences. And we hear from a lot of these people, right? And, and then also we have this macro narrative that's going on with, with oversight committees and potential disclosure and all these talks about UFOs and aliens that are existing in the mainstream now, right? So what are we to do with that as the church, right? So these are very important conversations. And, and I, I think, if anything, um, we should go back to our Bibles. This is, this is the place, the foundation of our faith. And I, and I think this... I mean, I think there's there's ways that this can provide context and, and, and richness to the to the text, especially when you read it from a supernatural worldview. And I, I think that's a lot of what Dr. Michael Heiser is trying to do in the Unseen Realm. And that's a great book. It's a lot like Mere Christianity. You're going to have to read each page three or four times because it's so dense. But it's such great historical context on 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 what the scripture is saying, who it's saying it to, and who it's written to, and how we're, how we're meant to read that as, as 21st century Americans, right? All that being said, nothing, nothing trumps the gospel and the message of Christ and, and, and what he did. And, and if, if anything, I think understanding a supernatural worldview makes something that is the most incredible thing that has ever, ever happened in the history of history even make more sense in, in, in him claiming dominion over the powers that, that, that essentially tried to claim us as sons and daughters of Adam out of the family of God. Yeah. And, and I... I can't say enough that that like Nate and I's hope in all of this is to point people back to the scripture and back to Christ. Like that that is that is it and and I, and I think that is our hope, right? That there's so the dark can be so dark and Ephesians is you know says that we are not to 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 participate in the in the um in the things or the acts of darkness but instead expose them. And sometimes I feel like that maybe is our mantra sometimes is like yeah. we're not going to we want to expose these things for what they are. Uh, not participate in them, but also, if we're to if we're to be followers of Jesus and and, and follow in the footsteps of Christ, um, I think we do ourselves a disservice not to have conversations around things that are happening in the context of 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 the Bible and also the work of Jesus Christ. And I and and that's our hope, man. I, I think that's the end, right? Is that we can maybe be going through all this really crazy darkness and the last three years have been wild, right? But our hope is always is always that that the end is written and, and, and I don't think any of us, I think there, there's a, sometimes this American ideal too, that like follow God and, and all, all your things are going to, you know, you're going to get a you know, bigger house and you get that paycheck. And you made a great video about the mega, you know, the mega church pastor mm-hmm. talking about the biggest house in Louisiana, all these funny things. Right. But there's this underlying sometimes subversive narrative that like that, that things are, are going to get amazing and we're all going to get the things we want. But I don't, Jesus never said that. Yeah. So things are going to be hard if we followed him, but ultimately, and I'm getting there with this analogy, ultimately, the hope is in him and the hope is in, is that is that we get to spend eternity with with him and that he is he is one and yeah. the end is written right mm. and so i think if if we look at all this and reminding ourselves the the book end of that 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 christ is already won mm-hmm. and that, that we are as sons and daughters in in the kingdom we are we are participating in that victory that um the darkness is not going to triumph I, but I, but i do believe that we would undersell ourselves not to talk about these things because every last person matters to God. And if somebody yeah. has an experience thinks that disqualifies them from the kingdom and the family of God, we're saying that's not true. In fact, there are answers for you. Right. There are answers for you um, in, in the scripture and in, in, in the Bible. And you are, you are loved and you are desired by your Father in heaven. Yeah. And all this stuff... Um, you know, doesn't disqualify our faith, yeah. and, and and I think that's you have to keep going back. I mean, that, that's the hope. You have to keep going back to this because I, I, the dark gets real dark, um, especially you know Nate and I, and we sit through interviews talking about so like you know satanic ritual abuse, people that have coming out of this, and you're like you're weeping because we have kids and this is happening to kids, and this stuff is a reality. Yeah, people don't want to talk about that because guess what? It's super uncomfortable and it's not fun to talk about. Yeah, and it's so dark. All you just leave feeling like you're dr- you're carrying stuff, right? Drain, but, yeah. But we're meant to. Expose but someone these has things. to talk about it. I, yeah. I think every great film, you know, I would say, every great film has that moment where your character's just gone through all this crap, 
And I think everyone is the Russell Crowe in this story, right? And the gladiator. Mm-hmm. Like you're up against you're up against hell. You're gonna do something about it? You're gonna fight? You're gonna fight back? I think a lot of times, you know, human beings is just I'm just gonna lay back and not do anything because I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. It's, like you didn't really choose to be born into a war. You are born into a war. Sorry, reality check. That's just how it is. But you can do something about it. You can just you, you can, can fight or you can get shot. You can fight or get shot. <laughs> that's, that's you can you can carry the fire. Yeah. You know you can you can yeah. you can put the Holy Spirit in your body and carry it. In Choose the, to fight back in the darkest places of this world and do something. And I Talk. and and when you have that humility, I think God shows up, and some miraculous things will happen to him because He needs us to carry the flame. And it's like that that analogy: just one light on a hill, man. Everyone can see it, dude. You can be Gandalf. Nice. I'm already there, dude. <laughs> Got a little, you good, shall not a little more. Gray. But uh, but uh, you know, it's it's like uh, it's not. You know, we don't leave people feeling depressed and miserable. It's like this. There's hope. Yeah. But you got to know what you're born into first before you can do anything about it. Yeah. You can't. And there's so much with it, dude. There's yeah. so much. And with there's it. Bigfoot just chilling, dude. And Bigfoot's <laughs> like, "What are y'all worried about, Dad?" Well, I mean, sometimes that's why we, we, got, we, we got to come out of all these Goes things and be like, "We need to have just a good old fashioned Bigfoot episode because <laughs> yeah. you trudge through some of the yeah. some of the that, mud and the that, muck." That's literally Ninjas of Butterflies ninety nine percent of the time. It's like, <laughs> here's all of these really crazy things, and <laughs> let's not care about them. <laughs> let's all just burn alive. Let's well, not a big deal, dude. Well, that I think I we know. did break a record for the longest podcast, yep. and that was awesome. The heaviest and most intense podcast possibly. No, ever. I, I love it. If, if you no, guys, you guys still yeah. no. If you all are still listening, thank you so much. <laughs> this was, I'm sure you all need therapy just like us, and need to process everything that we've learned because there's but so, go can, yeah, just go go to Blurry Creatures, please. listen to their stuff, and because um, mm. we can never figure out all of their stuff, all the your guys' expertise and all this stuff in within one episode. So yeah. we're gonna have to bring yeah. you guys back eventually. We'll have to do a part two. We have to deal. Yeah, right. this needs to be. Uh, but we are gonna do a part. Need half. more talk <gasps> on Patreon. On Patreon.com yeah. forward slash ninjas are butterflies, guys. <laughs> we didn't even do an ad. <laughs> we have. We're no, not we're, even doing an ad. No, I'm sure we no. probably added an ad in there somewhere. Brought no, to you by well, Sunday we'll Cool. Ad. It's it's <laughs> too it's too important. Yeah, Luke, pitch Sunday Cool to us. Oh, yeah, do do a <laughs> do a well, quick. We'll, we'll do. Yeah, yeah, pitch Sunday Cool. What? Why do you love Sunday Cool so much? Go. It's just you have it's ten seconds. Amazing. Actually, I really like the front doors. The nice. front doors. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. about their t-shirts? They're super soft, right? Super soft. Super nice. I've got a stack over there. I can't wait to wear them. What's the website again? Uh, SundayCool.com. Yeah. Yeah. He gets That's it. Right. Hey, check That's it out, right. man. Yeah. I mean, That's right. This, and, this and place Luke is awesome. Knows this merch. is a happy place. Luke's yeah. been shipping all our merch, so I'm, he knows. I'm a merch guy. At all. Absolutely. He's a merch yeah. guy. Well, and make I, make sure to like this, review us, please. Same thing with Blurry Creatures. Yeah. Please check out their podcast. And guys, we're continuing this uh, conversation again, once again, on Patreon. So we can't if you're not enough. there, <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can buy it and then cancel it if you want yeah. as soon as you hear done the podcast with uh, Blurry. So. Yeah, and again, we'll be on Patreon right after this. Yeah, where, not, where, where are we going to be after that this? Right now, but Patreons.com forward slash Ninjas of Butterflies. That's really important. <laughs> yeah, I don't so know what you guys are doing that. afterwards, but uh, we will be on Patreon <laughs> talking about hey, Josh, more things. Josh, shut up. Patreon.com forward slash Ninjas of Butterflies dot com. Okay. Love, love you guys. guys. Thank love you so guys. much for being here. Thanks, we love guys. you guys. Yeah. This is the longest podcast in Ninjas of Butterflies history. Yeah. Did I say ninja? I meant butterfly. The butterfly is no doubt one of God's ah! most beautiful creations. Has an empty your mind? You were martial arts. Fuck ninja attack! You got a studio. You got to do three hour. Dude, I had to pee. <laughs> I so bad. An hour hey, ago. Hey, just I hope do, it wasn't too too dark. Do you know? I'm telling you.